The oceans are covering up to 70% of the Earth's surface. The interaction with Sun and Moon as well as own Earth dynamics, with its rotation and winds, are the root causes behind tidals and waves. The energy behind these effects is overwhelming, large enough to be a source of energy able to cover several times the world's demand for power. Mankind has been trying to extract that energy for many years, but the environment and conditions are harsh. In this video we will focus on wave devices, explaining the fundamentals of each technology, bringing examples for each of them, and at the end we will explain which will be the fundamentals for some of them to suck. The oscillating water column does extract the energy from the air that is passing through a turbine. The air is pumped at a high pressure by a water column that behaves like a piston. The water column moves up and down following the waves. Using this working principle, we can find solutions onshore, near to the shore, or offshore. Most of them are terminator-like, although the offshore ones can be a point absorber type as well. There are three onshore solutions that have led the development. All of them are terminator-like solutions. The first one is called Limpet and was developed in 1991 by WaveGen in the Isle of Isla in Scotland. The unit had a nameplate of 500 kilowatts and was using Wells turbines. Lately the company was acquired by Voith Hydro. In 2018 the facility was decommissioned. The second one is Pico in the island of Pico, Azores, in Portugal. The system came alive in 1999 and was abandoned in 2018. The owner of the facility is Wavid. The nameplate of the power plant was 400 kilowatts and was using a horizontal wells turbine. The last one is the Mutriacu power plant in the Basque country in North Spain and was commissioned in 2011 with a nameplate of 300 kilowatts. Voith Hydro provided the technology, similar to the Limpet project. Wells turbines are used to produce the power. The power plant is installed within a breakwater and remains fully operational, selling the energy produced to the market. On the near to the shore group, the most known system is Ocean Links. It was a terminator type as well. The company behind was Energetech Australia that discontinued operations in 2014. Its IP and brand was sold to Wave Power Renewables from Hong Kong. Between 1997 and 2014 different prototypes were deployed. The biggest one, with a nameplate of 1 megawatt, was known as WaveGen. Unfortunately, the unit was damaged during the toll and had to be sinked near Karakalinga in South Australia. This was the event that triggered the bankruptcy of the company. Finally, under the offshore group, we can refer to Ocean Energy, an Irish company with a wide experience and several products already developed. The solution is a point absorber one. The air turbine has been designed by Siemens and its main characteristic is that is made in composite. The biggest unit has a nameplate of 500 kilowatts and is being testing in the island of Oahu, Hawaii. In the design board is the model OE50 with a nameplate of 2.5 megawatts. The pressure differential working principle is extracting the energy from the wave through a expansion and compression of the wave energy converter. When waves are rolling over the wave energy converter, the difference in height over the seabed translates into a difference of pressures. To capture a significant pressure variation the wave energy converter cannot be at high depths because in that case the difference in pressures compared to the average pressure will be negligible. Under this working principle is not possible to develop onshore solutions. Archimedes Wave Swing is a product developed by AWS Ocean Energy, a Scottish company. Wave Swing is a point absorber type. The solution is targeting to be deployed in water depths in excess of 25 meters and will have nameplates between 25 kilowatts and 250 kilowatts. At this point in time they are completing the construction of the pilot unit with a power of 16 kilowatts. The unit will be tested in Orkney, late 2021.
Carnegie Clean Energy, an Australian company, is the owner of the Cedo technology. The name Cedo is coming from the Greek goddess of the sea. The wave energy converter is a point absorber that is harvesting the kinetic energy from the rolling stream of the waves. Current version, Cedo 5, has a nameplate of 240 kilowatts and the company is working in a larger version named Cedo 6 with a nameplate of 1.5 megawatts. Currently they have projects in Australia, Ireland and France. Bombora Wave Power is an Australian company that is developing the M-Wave, a terminator-slash-attenuator solution. The solution relies in cells that can be stacked together to deliver a unit so the nameplate can be adjusted. Cells are pumping air towards a turbine. The company is building up a pilot unit with 1.5 megawatts capacity in Pembrokeshire, Wales. The units could be installed in the sea base or even in floating wind platforms. Floating devices can be separated in multibody or single body. The multibody ones do extract the energy from the relative motion between the different bodies. Ways to extract the energy may consider pneumatic systems, electrical motors or even hydraulic ones. There are no onshore solutions. Because the morphology, they are terminator or attenuator types. Palamis is the most famous one. It was developed by the Scottish company Palamis Wave Power, formerly Ocean Power Delivery. The first unit was connected to the UK grid in 2004. A second generation unit was tested in Portugal in 2009, and two second generation units were tested in Orkney between 2010 and 2014. The second generation is 180 meters long, 4 meters diameter and approximately 1,350 tons in weight, with a nameplate of 750 kilowatts. The company filed for bankruptcy by the end of 2014, and today the IP belongs to Wave Energy Scotland. Motion Energy, a company located in Edinburgh, is developing the Blue Horizon Energy Converter, a hinged raft system. The pilot Blue X will be tested at Orkney very soon. Sea Power is an Irish company bringing to the market another hinged solution. The power is extracted through a hydraulic system that is using seawater. Beyond the pilot unit, SeaPower is developing a unit with 1 megawatt nameplate and a 25% capacity factor. WavePiston is a Danish company that is developing a chain of energy collectors that is stretched between two anchored buoys. The system is pumping seawater and leads the pressurized water to a turbine. They are looking to test the full-size unit in Plokin, Canary Islands with a 200 kilowatts nameplate. Anaconda is quite an interesting project that is looking for funding. A distensible rubber floats just beneath the surface. The system is squeezed by passing sea waves. Bulges are created in the water-filled tube and travel down the tube to a turbine. Simple body floating systems are primarily point absorbers. The floater goes up and down with the wave and the power is extracted from that movement and the reaction against the anchoring point. In most of the cases the anchoring point is the seabed even though there are solutions anchoring the floater to a submerged platform. This need for a point in which the floater makes a reaction limits somehow the water depth that can be achieved. So, most of the solutions will be onshore or near to the shore. Wedge Global is a Spanish company that has developed a point absorber buoy. 
The project was tested at the Plokin facilities, in the Canary Islands, under the Undigen project. The nameplate of the system was 200 kilowatts. Currently the company is developing an advanced PTO system to enhance their product. Ocean Power Technologies is a U.S. company that has developed two products, the PV3 Power Buoy and the Hybrid Power Buoy. The PV3 is rated 3 kilowatts. The company is already in commercial operation and focus on small power applications. CorePower Ocean is a Swedish company that is developing a point absorber buoy with a target nameplate in the range of 300 kilowatts. They have tested a pilot unit in Orkney with a nameplate of 25 kilowatts and are in the process to test several full-scale units in Portugal. Their competitive advantage is on the PTO system and how can be tuned or detuned to boost energy production or to protect the system under storm conditions. EcoWave Power is a Swedish company that fixed its headquarter in Israel. Each floater is anchored trough a hinge to a shore structure. The movement of the floater is used to pump a hydraulic system that converts the pressure into power. Units have been installed in Jaffa, Israel, and Gibraltar. Similar to the previous one, the Danish company Weptos is developing an offshore solution. Each floater rotates around the PTO. Because they are asymmetrical, once the wave is gone they recover the original position. The penguin is a kind of boat with an asymmetrical hull. This asymmetry is causing the system to rotate when hit by the waves. An internal generator is using this spining to transform the movement into energy. The concept has been tested in Orkney and is planning to go for a larger scale trials in Plokin, Canary Islands. Wello is a Finnish company. The overtopping wave energy converters do take advantage of the gravity. Waves are overtopping a chamber where the water is collected. To enhance the collection of water, a ramp is facing the waves. Because of that, the water accelerates and fills the chamber above the sea level. Because the chamber is filled with water above the sea level, gravity helps in pushing the water through a turbine in the bottom of the chamber. As the systems needs to be facing waves, all overtopping systems are terminator type. Wave Dragon is an offshore overtopping wave energy converter. The floating structure does include the water chamber with the associated turbines and one arm each side of the main structure that help to collect the waves and concentrate them in the acceleration ramp. The unit has been tested in Orkney with a nameplate of 20 kilowatts. The production units will be sized between 2 and 12 megawatts tied to the specific location. The company is also considering to combine wind energy taking advantage of the floating platform. A 7 megawatts demonstration project is currently being applied for in Wales, and preparations are underway for a 50 megawatts array in Portugal. Finally, the oscillating working principle is referring to those systems that are submerged and oscillate due to the pressure of waves rolling over them. As the structures need to face the waves coming, all solutions will be terminator type. Depths are not large as the oscillating mechanism top needs to be close the surface to capture as much energy as possible. All of them are placed in the seabed. Oyster System from Aquamarine Power, a Scottish company, has been a reference for the sector. In November 2009, the first full-scale unit, with a nameplate of 315 kilowatts, was tested in Orkney. In March 2012, Aquamarine announced plans to install 50 oyster devices on the seabed of the Western Isles in Scotland. Unfortunately this never happened and the company ceased operations in 2015. Wave Roller is a product of the Finnish company AW Energy. The machine operates in nearshore areas at depths of below 20 meters. Depending on tidal conditions it is mostly or fully submerged and anchored to the seabed. 
the Wave Roller nameplate is between 350 kilowatts and 1 megawatt, with a capacity factor above 25%. Wave Roller has been tested in Paniche, Portugal, since 2007. The company is also developing the next generation oscillating surge wave converter that is named Mega Roller. As we can see, there are many different solutions, and those shown here are not the totality of them. So, there is a high diversity and technologies have not converged. All players are working to clear the technical risks, but this is not sufficient to make the wave energy technology bankable. Is also about their capacity as companies to support guarantees and the strength of the value chain. The first one is about getting access to funds but the second one requires a convergence on the solutions. Some of the technologies will die but at this point in time we do not know which of them. A lot of work is in front of us. Thanks for watching.